The following Studio L's article is brought to you by Scrapbooking.com magazine from the June 2013 issue. Asian Adventure Part 1 by Els Vandenberg. Projects by Els Vandenberg, Donna Hagenleibel, and Judy Kaufman. Let me tell you a little secret. When I design dies for Elizabeth Craft Designs, I make sure that there's something I would want to use for a long time, and I hope that you feel the same way. It's important to me that every single one is fun and versatile and a good value. So, here's how the Asian theme dies got started. A friend remarked that the ginger jar is her favorite peel off from the sheet that has one each of five different jars, bowls, and vases. She wanted more jars. It gave me the idea that a ginger jar die would solve the problem for her. And if I made the lid and jar as two separate dies, the bottom section could be used for a tall vase as well. I designed a series of Asian themed dies. A vase with a curvy shape, a kimono, koi fish, and lotus blossom. I made sure that the flower dies I was working on at the same time would be the right size to coordinate with the ginger jar and vase. The cherry blossom is one of those flowers. While I was working on a vine in the flower sets, I also designed a bamboo trellis. Though I'll likely use it most with the vines and flowers, it coordinates well with the Asian themed die shapes too. So now you have a sneak peek into the way my designs happen. Now it's time for an Asian adventure. First, my lotus, ginger jar, and kimono cards. The lotus flowers cut from adhesive back velvet sheets are colored with dilution sprays for a mix of soft texture and subtle sparkle. The ginger jar die can be used with or without the lid. Without the lid, it turns into a vase to fill with flowers. Bend or curve the petals on the flowers for added dimension, and use glitter dots to accent the center of each blossom. Use real silk fabric for the kimono silhouette backing shapes. Use a double-sided adhesive sheet to adhere to the silk and stabilize the material before die cutting. Save the leftovers when die cutting velvet kimono overlays to use as accents within the lines. Next up, a golden kimono card by Donna Heckenlabel. Embossed and patterned Asian papers make a great background for a kimono card. For a tone on tone effect, Use the same color cardstock for the kimono silhouette backer as you use for the right side of the background and the small rectangle, and choose a pattern paper in the same palette. Add a narrow border around the card and the small rectangle to tie things together. Round tags, vase cards, and kimono cards by Judy Kaufman. For my kimono cards, I altered shimmer sheets with pinata color inks before cutting the simple silhouette shapes. I used adhesive-backed velvet sheets for the outlines. I kept my kimono cards simple and small in scale, knowing that Els and Donna were going to make cards that had a lot more going on. For the round tags, the red ginger jar background is shimmer sheets, but the outline overlay is cardstock. The black ginger jar is shimmer sheets too, but cut without a metal adapter plate, so the details were cut only part way through. For the vase cards, I created a horizontal band or table on which each vase sits. I fussy cut the origami paper for these tables, keeping the diamond and checkerboard patterns centered and symmetrical. The flowers on one of the tags and one of the vase cards are outlined peel-offs on top of altered shimmer sheets. Dimension is a good thing, but be sure your cards aren't more than a quarter of an inch thick if you intend to mail them using standard postage. Complete supply lists for all of these projects can be found in the online version of this article. To find the products featured in this article, check with your local scrapbook retailer. Browse our Prima Retail stores for coupons to a store near you. We hope you enjoyed this article. Don't miss the rest of the great articles and features in this month's issue of Scrapbooking.com magazine.